country. She's the host of a primetime English language television program overseen by the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And though she and I may not agree on everything, I believe this is actually a really unique opportunity, an opportunity to hear a very different view. Now, as these trade negotiations stall out, it's helpful to know how the Chinese Communist Party is thinking about trade and about the now, in the interest of transparency, I should explain that I don't speak for anyone but myself as the host of a Fox Business show. My guest, however, is part of the CCP, and that's fine. As I said, I welcome different perspectives on this show. With all that in mind, I'm very pleased tonight to welcome Ms. Lu Xin, host of the Primetime Opinion Show, the the Fox Fox Opinion to Trish Regan Primetime tonight. Yeah, no. Now, just quickly to the viewers, please bear with us as we have a significant time delay in our satellites between Beijing and the U.S. And because of that, Beijing we are very pleased not to speak over each other. But Shin, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Trish, for having me. It's a great opportunity for me. Unprecedented. I never dreamed that I would have this kind kind of opportunity to speak to you and to speak to many audiences in ordinary households in the, in the United States. Um, yeah, it well, I need to correct. I need to no, correct because because I, 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 I am not. Kind of I, I am not. Tell me. Um, yeah. Uh, forgive me. You are not what? Yeah. And Trish, I have to get it straight. I am not a member of the Communist Party. Uh, this is all the so please don't mm. assume that I'm a member and I don't mm. speak for mm. the mm. Communist Party of China. Uh, and China and I'm here for today, I'm only speaking for myself uh, as Liu Xin, a journalist working for CGTN. So well, if anybody well, wants to quote me or anything, please put my name there at least. Okay. Okay, appreciate it. Um, what's your. Liu Xin has a piano of where the trade talks actually are right now. Do you Sorry? believe, well, it's, give me a current assessment of where we are on these trade talks. Do you believe a deal is possible? Um, it, it is true that the satellite connection is not very good, but I, I believe that you're asking me where we are in terms of the trade negotiations. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have any insider information. What I knew was the talks were not very successful last time they were uh, going on in the United States, and now I think both sides are considering what to go next. But I think China has made its, the Chinese government has made its position very clear that uh, unless the United States... 我点评一下第一个问题Trish问这个刘鑫说你认为能不能达成一个协议 treat the Chinese um, government, treat the Chinese negotiating team with respect and uh, show the willingness to talk without using outside pressure, there is high possibility that there could be a productive trade deal. Otherwise, I think uh, we might be facing a prolonged period of, uh, of, of problems for both yeah. sides. I, I, and I, I, would, I would stress that trade wars are never good. They're not good for for anyone. Um, so I want to believe, Shin, I want to believe that something can get okay. done. And these are certainly challenging times. I realize there's a lot of rhetoric out there. Uh, but let me turn to one of the biggest issues, and that's intellectual property rights. I mean, fundamentally, I think we can all agree it's, it's never right to, to take something that's not yours. And yet, uh, in going through so many of these cases, cases at the Independent World Trade Organization, the WTO that China's a member of, it, it, as well as the, the DOJ and FBI cases, you can actually see some of them uh, on the screen right now. There's evidence there that China has stolen enormous amounts of intellectual property, hundreds of billions of dollars worth. Now, you know, that's a lot of money, but truly, I, I guess we shouldn't really care if it's hundreds of billions of dollars or just 50 cents. How do American businesses operate in China if they're at risk for having their property, their ideas, their hard work stolen? 好,Trish第一个问题,单刀植入,直接讲这个知识产权的盗窃问题。
，秘密都被人偷走了。咱们看刘鑫怎么回答啊？这个应该是在他的预料之中的，应该有这个底稿。看看刘鑫的说辞。Well, I think Trish,、uh, you have to ask American businesses whether、um, they wanted to come to China, whether they find coming to China and, and cooperating with Chinese businesses has not been、uh, profitable or not, and they will they will tell you their answers. As far as I understand,、um, many American companies have been established in China and they're very profitable and the great. The great majority of them, I, I believe, plan to continue to invest in China and and explore the Chinese market. Well, now,、uh, U.S. President Donald Trump's tariff makes it a little bit more difficult, makes the the, the future a little bit uncertain. 得啊，停一下啊！刘鑫一开始回答非常好啊，把球马上踢给美国的这些公司了，说你得你别问我呀，我没答案，你去问那些美国的这些公司啊，他们在中国做生意是不是赚钱啊？反正中国就是这个烂样子，我们就是耍流氓。啊，你要到我们这儿来，你按照我们的规矩来，遵守我们的法律。他如果算下来能赚钱，那就到中国来；如果不赚钱，嗯，那没有人强求他来嘛。啊，这是刘鑫的回答，这个应该是官方的标准标准答案。啊，他们下面就讲到了这个川普总统的这个啊这个关税的问题，这个实际上有点扯边了啊。关税呃，这个川普总统加关税。和没和这个这个这个知识产权道歉呢？这是两个话题，看看他怎么样把两个话题给揉成一个啊？看看。I do not deny that there are、um, IP infringement, there are、uh, copyright issues, or there are piracy, or even theft of, of commercial commercial secrets. I think that is、um, something that has to be dealt with, and I think the Chinese government and the Chinese people, and me as an individual, I think there's a consensus、uh, because without the protection of IP right, nobody, no country, no individual can can be stronger, can develop itself. So、uh, I think that is a very clear consensus. Among the Chinese,、uh, you know, society, and and of course there are cases where individuals, where companies go and steal, and I think that's、uh, a common practice probably in every part of the world. And there are companies in the United States. He immediately admits that there is this problem. Ah, this problem is there. Ah, this I personally also agree with. He immediately says that in fact, all the countries in the world have this problem. Ah, I don't know how to solve it. Ah, we hope to solve it. Ah, we hope to solve it. Who sue each other all the time over infringement on on IP rights, and you can't say simply because these cases are happening that America is stealing, or China is stealing, or the Chinese people are stealing. And basically, that's the reason why I wrote that rebuttal because I think this kind of blanket statement is really not helpful. Really not helpful. Well, it's not just a statement. It's it's multiple reports, including evidence from the WTO. But let me ask you about Huawei because that's certainly in the headlines right now. Sure, I don't deny those. No, I deny those. Right. Ah, 第一轮关于这个知识产权的什么，我觉得刘鑫回答的呢，呃，可以给他打六十分啊。这个确实的这个怒气一下被他打下了不小啊。现在确实觉得这个话题呢，再追下去没意思了，马上去呃，这个确实要换话题了，换到华为上去。换到华为上去，吹死这个傻姑娘，你就吃亏了。来，接着来。Right. I mean, you know, look. I think, as I said, we can all agree that if you're going to do business with someone, it has to be based on trust, and you don't want anyone stealing your valuable information that you've spent decades working on. Anyway, China passed a law in 2017 requiring tech companies to work with the military and the government. So it's not just individual companies, right, that might be getting access to this technology. It's the government itself, which is an interesting nuance. But I get that China is upset. That Huawei is not being welcomed into the U.S. markets. I totally get it. So let me just ask you this: It's an interesting way to think about it. I think what if what if we said, "Hey, you know, sure, Huawei, come on in." But here's the deal: You must share all those incredible technological advances that you've been working on. You got to share it with us. Would that be okay? Oh, this question has been very blunt. Uh, Tracy is this way to say. Okay, we're talking about Huawei's problem. 华为现在很牛啊，对吧？你的技术很先进啊。那么这么说吧，啊，我们欢迎你，华为到我们美国来占领我们的市场。啊，咱们按照中国的规矩，你请你把你华为的这个科技的机密，哎，全分享给我吧，告诉我们啊，行吗？你觉得可以吗？咱们按照中国的方式来做。你中国不是要求我们外企啊分享我们的这个商业机密吗？行吗？ 
I think it is if it is through cooperation, if it is uh, through uh, mutual learning, if it is through um, if you pay for the use of this IP of this high technology, I think it's absolutely fine. Why not? We all we all prosper because we learn from each other. I learned English because I had American teachers. I learned English because I had American friends. I still uh, learn how to do journalism because I have American uh, copy editors or editors. So I think that's fine so long as it is not um, illegal. I think everybody should do that and that's how you get better, mm -hmm. right? But you mentioned something. 呃，这个刘鑫没想到回答的还是不错的啊。刘刘鑫说：“那可以啊，那只要是按照这个相关的规定啊，这个你你付我们钱，呃，那那有什么不可以的？”他马上举自己的例子说：“我你看，我也学了英语，我的这个学习的过程中也有老师，我现在的工作人员当中也有呃给我做编辑工作的，他都是美国人啊。啊，这个我们互相学习嘛。哎，这个刘鑫这个回答可以给他打八十分到八十五分，不错，嗯。” Something pretty important, which is that you should pay for the acquisition of that. And you know, look, I, I think that the the liberalized economic uh, world in which we live uh, has has valued intellectual property, and it, it's it's governed by a set of laws. And so we all. 得，现在 Tracy 已经处于下风了。他现在开始，他这个脑袋有点转不过来。他开始讲说掉了。那当然了，知识产权是应该付费的嘛。这都是废话，接着看他什么时候能能够这个抓一个新的话题出来。We all need to kind of play by the rules and and play by those laws if we're going to have that kind of trust between each other. But I, I think you bring up some good points. Let me turn to China right now, which is now wow the second largest economy. At what point? 现在 Tracy 说呃表扬了啊承认啊这个 Tracy 讲的对。然后说了一些废话，现在脑袋转过来了，说 OK， 咱们换中换话题，咱们讲讲中国是第二大经济体。Will China decide to abandon its developing nation status and will stop borrowing from the World Bank? Well, I think this kind of discussion is going on, and I've heard uh, very live discussions about this. And indeed, there are people talking about China already becoming so big. Uh, why don't you just grow up? But basically, I think you said it in your program as well. China. 这个问题呢很弱了，没有什么进攻性。呃，这个问题就是会有标准答案的。他他他就说，现在中国是第二大经济体，呃，那么是一个发达国家了。那么为什么还要向世界银行借钱呢？啊，对不对啊？能不能这个把自己的这个定位定成一个发达国家，就那个意思，不要向世界银行借钱呢？啊，这个就没什么意思。这个这个刘鑫回答这个问题，呃，完胜。China grow up. Well, I think we want to grow up. We don't want to be, you know, dwarfed or, or poor or underdeveloped all the time. Um, but it, it depends on how you define developing country, right? If you look at China's overall size, the overall size of the Chinese economy, yes, we are very big, the world's number one. But don't forget, we have 1.4 billion people. That is uh, over three times the, the, the population of the United States. So if you divide the second largest overall... Uh, if 刘鑫的回答就是很简单啊，你别看我们的这个经济体量很大呀、啊，但是别忘了我们有十四亿人啊，随便什么经济数字，用十四亿人一除，那我们就是不不发达国家嘛，我们愿意成为发达国家，但是事实上，就看你怎么定义发达和不发达嘛。Economy in the world, basically, uh, when it comes to comes down to per capita GDP, we're I think less than one sixth of that of the United States, and even less than some uh, other more developed countries in Europe. So you tell me, uh, where shall we put ourselves? This is a very complicated issue because per capita, as I said, is very small, but overall it's very big. So we can do a lot of big things, and people are looking up, looking upon us to do much more around the world. So I think we are doing that. We are contributing to the United Nations. We are the world's biggest contributor to the UN human uh, UN peacekeeping missions, and we are we are giving out donations and human humanitarian aids and all of that because we know we have to grow up. And and Trish, thank you for that uh, reminder. <laughs> 哎呀，刘鑫这个可以打九十五分了。这个完美的把中国共产党的这个标准的在国际上的这个吹牛逼的这些东西全说出来了。呃，这个这个 Tracy 现在是，就说不是搭不上话来了。<笑>呃，这个呃，刘鑫打九十五分啊。Um, let's get to the tariffs. I, I've seen some of your commentaries too, and 
呃 ，Tracy 马上觉得行了，你答得我满意了，换话题，咱们换到关税啊，讲看看看看怎么讲关税，看看 Tracy 能提出什么有意思的问题了。I appreciate that you think China could lower some of its tariffs. I, I watched you say that, and I'm totally in agreement with you. In 2016, the average tariff, effectively a tax, that was charged on an American good in China was 9.9 percent. Now that was nearly three times what the U.S. was charging. So, what do you say about this? What do you think about saying, "Hey, you know, the heck with these tariffs. Let's get rid of them all together." Would that work? 好，这个这个就是 Tracy 的问题啊。一旦跟中国人讲数字啊，马上你就吃亏了。<笑>中国的数字都是假的。Tracy 说：“我注意到你那个刘鑫，你过去说啊，这个你对中国呃呃这个进口的商品加关税呢，你也不满意啊。”比如说啊，从我们美国进口的呃商品啊，你们居然加了百分之九点几的这个关税，哎，这个太高了啊！呃，我们为什么不可以降到零呢？呃，这个意思，呃 ，Tracy 上当了，一旦讲数字，落了共产党的陷阱。呃，我预估 t r 这个刘鑫回答这个问题得百分啊，满分啊，啊，因为为什么呢？实际上你 Tracy 自己讲出来，中国加关税百分之九就错了，何止百分之九啊？你想美国的汽车卖到中国？加多少？加百分之四五十都不止啊！啊，看看刘鑫怎么怎么这个雄辩的回答，打脸，直接打脸。嗯，中国共产党有标准的回答，对于这些问题，涉及到数字，你肯定要倒霉。I think that would be a wonderful idea. I mean, don't you think for 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 American consumers, products from China would be even cheaper, and for for consumers in in China, products from America would be so much more so much cheaper too. I think that would be a wonderful idea. I think we should work towards that. But you know, you talked about rule based system, rule based order. This is the thing. If you want to change the rules, it has to be done in mutual consensus. Basically, when you talk about tariffs, it is not just between China and the United States. I understand. Then, if you lower tariff between just between China and the United States, the Europeans will come, the Japanese will come, the 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 the, the Venezuelans probably will come and say, "Hey, we want the same tariff." You can't discriminate, you know, between between countries. So it is a very complicated settlement to reach. And uh, um, I think the last trade, right? agreement that China and the and and the W about trade. Yes, I'm talking about tariffs. And I think the last time when the world agreed on the kind of tariff reduction China should commit to. Was exactly the result of a multilater multilateral and years of difficult negotiations. The United States saw in its interest and decided to what degree they can agree or to what degree they can lower their tariff. Nobody put a gun at their head, and China agreed to, although with some difficulties, to lower their our tariff considerably. It is all the decision of countries according to their own self-interest. Now things are different. Yes, I agree. Twenty years later, what are we going to do? Maybe these old Rules need to be changed. You know what? Let's talk about it. Let's let's do it according to the rules. The same rules. If you don't like the rules, we'll change the rules. But again, it has to be a multinational, a multilateral decision. Yeah, I, I, I would just say, you know, you can go back to the Trade Agreement of 1974, Section 301. 呃，刘鑫得分满分。Tracy 听了半天听不下去了，但是呢，他也插不上话，他也抓不住刘鑫的毛病。呃，他打断了这个刘鑫的讲话，这个在规则上就有点违规了啊。呃 ，Tracy 丢分了，呃，这个就是 Tracy 自己没经验，陷入了跟共产党讲数字，碰到刘刘鑫这样的高手，那绝对输啊。One, there is a rule that enables the United States to use tariffs to try and influence the behavior of China. Should it be taking, stealing our intellectual property, and that I think in some ways is. 讲到这儿的时候，这个 Tracy 的脑筋已经乱掉了，他的思路已经跟不上了。这个加关税和这个惩罚啊，知识产权的盗窃，这个这个关系很弱，基本上没什么关系。他现在把这两个放在一块儿讲，就说明他现在短路了，脑袋一片空白。他的这个他的这个创作小组啊，他的这个呃这个研究队伍啊，呃不行，调研队伍跟不上。没想到刘鑫这么厉害。As part of what this all comes back to, and it's a sense of trust, and it, it, I, I hear you on the forced technology transfer, and I think that some American companies perhaps have made some mistakes in terms of being willing to overlook what they might have to give up in the near term.、Um, but this is an issue, I think, where 
the country as a whole um, needs to step in, and we're seeing the United States do that, perhaps in a way that hasn't happened. I mean, it's been in the background. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think previous administrations have identified the challenge, but have really been a, a little unwilling to take it on. So we're living in these very different times. Uh, 其实绕来绕去，他是不断的、慢慢的讲，实际上是想恢复记忆，怎么样找到一个切入点？哎，有意思的主导这个谈话，他就是说，哎呀，我同意你讲的这些，这个有有道理啊，你讲的有道理。也许是我们的美国的这些公司，他们自己犯了错误，决定到中国去做生意，对吧？你到狼窝去做生意，被狼咬一口，有什么了不起的呀？你看啊，这个也是老问题了。他趁机就开始转到批评前任政府啊啊，就是说，那么这个问题呢是一个老问题，这是国家和国家的问题，这些问题都是他的他的思路啊，在这儿回荡着，在漂浮着，在寻找新的热点。他现在还没找着，咱们接着听他，看他什么时候能找到一个好的切入点。嗯、um, ，How do you define state capitalism? OK. OK， 这个崔姐终于找到了话题，估计看了一下手上的稿，马上换话题。他说：“好，请你定义一下什么叫国家资本主义。Uh, ”呃 ，You mean how do I define？ 呃、uh, ，Sorry，I didn't hear the last thing. You mean the forced technology transfer? No, no, no. State technology transfer? No, no. Well, I guess forced technology transfer may be part of that. But Tracy 忽然之间换到了这个请求留心定义。国家资本主义这个话题上去，这是个完全不同的话题。刘鑫脑袋还没转过来呢，老刘鑫说：“怎么回事啊？你让我谈什么？我没听清。你还让我讲这个什么是怎么定义这个知识产权这个盗窃吗？强迫知识产权的这个披露吗？” State capitalism. In other words, one of the things that I, I, I would just technology transfer and somehow you kind okay. of skip it, skid it away. I, I, I'm playing well, your compliment here. here. Hang on one second, Shin. I, I want to say that I think you know you're. 这个在这个地方，刘鑫就抱怨了，说：“你看，咱们本来讲的是好好的嘛，咱们讲这个知识产权的这个转移的问题嘛，你怎么说忽然就换了话题了，换到国家资本主义去了啊？”刘鑫都有点抱怨了，实际上是崔斯的脑筋啊，一片空白，就是思路跟不上。哎 ，system of economics is very interesting because, you know, I, you you have a capitalist system, right? But it's state run. So talk to us about that. How do you define it? 呃，崔森又进一步解释，哎、呃，说我为什么问这个问题，就是说你们不是有一个资本主义的，呃呃，这个制度吗？啊，就这个就错了啊，中国没有一个资本主义制度，呃，中国是叫中国特色的社会主义，他从来不是公开的讲我们叫资本主义，还是反对资本主义的啊，抵制资本主义的。那么崔森就说，就给他解释说，你们不是有一个资本主义制度吗？但是是用国家的形式在运转，啊、呃，在运转，在运作，啊、呃，请你们就，请你给我解释一下怎么回事。呃，这个 Tracy 是处于弱风了啊！现在刘鑫明显占上占上风。Well, we we would like to define a socialism with Chinese characteristics, where the market, where market forces are expected. 刘鑫马上，现在刘鑫的思路就跟得很快啊，马上转过来了。刘鑫说 ，OK， 呃，说我们当然是中国特色的社会主义啊，当然有市场的，呃，有市场的因素。哎，马上就换到了。官方的标准话语啊，因为中国官方从来不承认自己搞的是资本主义，也不承认是国家资本主义，国家资本主义就是纳粹了。To play the dominating or the deciding role in 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 the allocation of resources, basically, you know, let、uh, let the market. We want it to be a market economy, but there are some Chinese characteristics. For instance,、uh, some state-owned enterprises which are、um, playing. 刘鑫就轻松的背书了，就是我们中国的制度，我们当然有市场了，我们希望成为一个市场经济啊。但是呢，我们是有中国特色的啊，我们是有这个国营企业，对吧？有社会主义公有制，啊、这个都是屁话了。但是很遗憾 ，Tracy 不懂中国的政治，引到了一个漩涡里去。这个地方 Tracy 输输惨了，听听刘鑫怎么在这儿瞎白话啊！这是中国官方的话语了。Um, uh, an important but increasingly smaller role, maybe in the in the in the economy, and、uh, everybody thinks that China's economy is state-owned. Everything is state-controlled. Everything is state, state, state. But let me tell you, it is not 
the, the true picture. Uh, if you look at the statistics, for instance, 80% of Chinese. OK， 刘星的思路马上转到这个为这个中国的呃特色的社会主义进行辩护，就是我们虽然是社呃这个呃市场经济有社会主义特色啊，有这个国营企业，但是我们的国营企业实际上占的比例很小啊。你看看我们的统计数字，嗯，啊很小、啊，因为美国要求中国这个所谓经济。结构的改革就是要让中国削减国有企业的份额啊，让中国的经济更接近纯的市场经济。刘星在这个地方为中国现在的这个呃 status quo 进行辩护。These employees were employed by private enterprises. Eighty percent, eighty percent of Chinese exports were done by private companies. Were produced by. 他马上这数字信口信口呃信手拈来啊，说你看看。我们中国的这个呃，这个这个雇员百分之八十的是被私有企业雇佣呃雇佣的，是吧？我们的这个出口产品百分之八十是私有企业做出来的，啊，对不对？啊，他就强调这个东西，这个数字肯定是不可靠，但是这是官方的说辞。刘星也没有做过调查和核实工作，这个拿来忽悠美国人足够足够。About 65 percent of、uh, technological innovation were achieved or carried out by private enterprises. The largest,、uh, some of the largest companies that that affect our life were. 啊，比如我们的中国的科技创新，百分之六十五啊，是由这个私有企业，呃，这个这个。Some, some internet companies or some、uh, 5G technology companies, they are private companies. So、um, we we are. 特别强调这个 5G 的发明 5G 技术这些公司都是私人企业。他当然没有点华为的名，这等于是为华为做广告的，说华为是私有企业。呃，这当然不是私有企业了，但是这就是共产党的宣传啊。这老美要是看了这个都会信呐、啊。Uh, yes, a socialist economy with Chinese characteristics, but it's you know not everything state controlled, state run. It's not like that. We are actually quite mixed and very dynamic, dynamic and and actually very very open as well. 到这儿 ，Tracy 已经完了 ，Tracy 已经完全接不上话了。整个大屏幕给了这个刘星，让刘星在这儿充分的阐述，呃，中国特色的社会主义制度是多么的好，多么的优秀，我们的市场是多么的活跃啊，我们。呃，我们这个制度是最好的，比你美国的好。接着听他忽悠啊。Well, I, I think you need to probably keep being open. I think that that,、uh, you know, as a free trade person myself, I, I, I think that that's the direction to pursue,、um, and ultimately, that leads to greater economic prosperity for you and better economic prosperity for us. And so, then you get a win-win. But、um, absolutely, this was interesting. I appreciate you. Tracy 完了 ，Tracy <笑> Tracy 认了，觉得刘星你说的对，哎，我觉得既然这样的话，那你就应该照着你的做，但是呢，要保持开放，哎，咱们最后是双方共赢嘛，那挺好，谢谢你让我长见识了。Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you if you want to have a discussion in the future, we can do that. If you want to come to China, I'd love it. You're welcome, and I'll take you around. <laughs> thank you, Trish, for the Shen, opportunity. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. You know, look, I would just say,、uh, as as I told Shen, no one wants a trade war, but we have to think long and hard about the right next steps. Interesting conversation coming up next. We have live reaction from former Reagan defense assistant under secretary. 呃，哈，呃，后边这谁啊？这是我的老朋友啊，这个是这个，呃，这个老兄是这个老兄是反共的，这个是中国中国问题的。咱们先不说他啊，呃，我简单的点评一下这个 Tracy 和刘鑫的这个所谓的这个辩论哈。我认为刘鑫完胜，刘鑫完胜，祝贺中央电视台的领导啊，为刘鑫。担着风险，让他做成了这个节目。中国可以不加编辑的完完整的播出这个这个节目去。呃，中国人民看了之后会觉得爽。美国的播音员、主持人确实不行，在这个知识储备啊、脑筋的这个呃活跃程度啊，嗯，如果说刘星是一百分的话 ，Tracy 是最多六十分，勉强及格，等于是为中国共产党的这个这个啊啊这个在国际上的这个正面形象做了免费的宣传。呃，所以呃，这个刘星
，呃，祝贺你非常成功，这一次啊，为中国政府增了光，啊，成功的欺骗了美国人民、美国的观众啊，呃，好，咱们的今天的直播呢，啊，就到这儿，谢谢大家，我是李洪宽。